On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a guan. A blessed and wonderful uh, Thursday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public, and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog, so we can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So, watch this now, my peeps, in the morning, we are going to kick it off with an international story coming out of a Caribbean island identified as Barbados, where it is said that the police in Barbados have removed the decomposed body of a 32-year-old Jamaican man from a house at Duncan's Main Road in St. Michael, Barbados. Now reports indicate that the body was that of Shahaya Devon Bowens, said to be of Clarendon in Jamaica. The body was discovered yesterday morning. Now anyone knowing this person, Shahaya Devon Bowens, said to be of a Clarendon address in Jamaica, is now no longer among the land of the living. Now reports surrounding his loss of life is not yet clear. The police are stating that they would have to do a post-mortem to determine the cause of his loss of life because his body was found in an advanced state of decomposition. So anyway, my peeps, back to local style. Well, let me start off with some enlightenment for make the regular ones and ones them know that hey, some whole heap of fake page start float around the ear on Instagram and also on TikTok. So this is for you, the regular ones and ones them out there tuning into the voice of Andy Spot News Media to be very, very careful when you're reaching out. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of pages that is definitely not on the Spot News Media on Instagram. The first page is this one presently on your screen. As you can see, one post, 13 followers, one person that this page is following. They stole my logo and I do them thing. This next page is on the Spot underscore media JDF have 494 followers and I'm going to follow 18. This is also on Instagram and this is definitely not on the Spot News Media. This next page is on the Spot News Media with a dot in between every word as I can see. 436 followers. No post, nobody It's following. This is definitely not on the Spot News Media. This next page, the logo is different from mine, but on the spot news nonetheless. And it also have a at on the spot news media 876, which is actually my page. So I'm not for sure what this person is actually trying to do. So for Instagram users, this page presently on your screen is my page instagram page so to be clear my instagram page is on the spot news media 876 that's my instagram page and as you can see my logo is in a white background not a black background as the others are and as you can see there is also a link to my YouTube page and I have a larger following which is 57,900k followers presently 
and I'm following 133, 543 posts so far. I don't post that often on the Instagram, but I post nonetheless. So for those who did not know and need to know, my Instagram page is on the spot news media 876 on Instagram. And this is what it actually looks like. Now for TikTok users, I'm not on TikTok. I've said this so many times. I'm not on TikTok. Now this is a TikTok page that has also been used in my logo. And of course, my name, I am not on TikTok. The actual Gmail given on this page is actually my Gmail. I'm not for sure if this page is created to point persons to me, but this is my Gmail that they do not have an access to because my Gmail account is protected. So you can rest assured that if you email me on on the spot news media at gmail.com, it will come straight to me and me only. Because they would have to know the two-step verification code that will be sent wholly and solely to me to get access to that. So I'm not sure what these persons are trying to do if they're trying to assist some of them are trying to belittle i'm not for sure but on the spot news media again is not on tiktok for the tiktok users if and when i decide to create a tiktok page for on the spot news media you will all be notified so again these pages that i showed you before i know are fake pages with the exception of the one on Instagram that I stated is mine. And for those who wish to reach out to me via email, it's on the spot news media at gmail.com. Yeah, man. So I could get into this morning's set of stories. Now, the police have released the names of two persons of interest who they have identified into the lesser life of the soldier in the denim town zozo now the police have identified two persons of interest in the fatal knockings and clappings of the jamaica defense force private that's ej damville presently on your screen the soldier that was taken out by armed criminal elements on august 23rd when members of the military was attacked by them inside the zone of special operations in the community of Denham Town, which is in the Kingston Western Police Division. Now, the head of the Kingston Western Police, that Senior Superintendent Michael Phipps, stated that the investigators are seeking two residents of the Chestnut Lane community for questioning. One I made mention of in a recent vlog which is this criminal element here, presently on your screen identified as Shaquem Gray and also another criminal element identified only by his alias as Chubby or Chubbs. SSP Phipps is urging the men to report forthwith to the Denham Town Police Station by 6 p.m. today, Thursday. Now, in the meantime, the Jamaica Defense Force stated on Wednesday that it is cooperating fully with the Independent Commission of Investigations and that the Jamaica Constabulary Force is also cooperating in their investigation of the knockings and clappings of the soldier. The military also stated that it is taking into account the concerns being expressed by the general public of Denham Town stating that the soldier may have been accidentally canned up by one of his colleagues during an exchange of gunfire. The JDF also promised full transparency in the investigation, adding that arrangements are being made to ensure that the mother of Private Damville is present at the autopsy. 
His mother, Kalisha Reynolds, stated that she has not yet been given the privilege to view her son's body since his life was taken last week. Now on the spot news media, we'll definitely be keeping close tabs on this one to see what evidence is shown in terms of the fatality of the soldier. Yeah, man. So watch this now, my peeps. We're going to saggle to the eastern end of the island. We're talking about in the St. Thomas Police Division, where this female presently on your screen identified as 52-year-old Suzette Clark was reported missing just a few days ago. But sadly, her mutilated body has since been found. Now, as I stated earlier, she has since been identified as Suzette Clark, said to be of a South Haven address in St. Thomas and also an employee of Red Stripe, Jamaica. So according to reports reaching on the Spot News Media, a representative from Red Stripe called a family member on Saturday inquiring about the whereabouts of Miss Clark after she had not reported to work since last Wednesday. She was reported missing on Saturday. So her family members and friends decided to search the area in and around their community for her. Since they received that call from her supervisor at Red Strap that she had not turned up for work. And then, who and behold, they got the shock of their life when family members stumbled upon the headless body of Miss Clark sometime around 1.30 on Wednesday afternoon, this Wednesday afternoon, during a search. The body of the woman was partially burned and covered with tires. Boy, trust me, it's really, really rough. The family member stated that she's a hard worker, a woman who no mix up in a nothing so they are really dumbfounded as to why someone would take her life in such a brutal and horrific manner. They even reached out to the taxi driver that always take her into Kingston from St. Thomas. The taxi driver stated that she called and confirmed pickup on the day she went missing. He went to the top of the hill where he always pick her up and called her several times on her phone without any success. He even drove closer down the hill to see if he would see her walking. But other passengers in the vehicle got frustrated and he had to leave. He stated that he has not seen or heard from her since that day. So everyone is now wondering who could have done that to the 52-year-old. To the fact that they even mutilated her body and also burnt it partially. Boy, may I tell you my peeps. The thing rough. And another update for you in relation to the fatal knockings and clappings of the funeral home operator whose life was taken in Clarendon just a few days ago. Now on the spot news media get to understand that he had a fight with a licensed firearm holder on Tuesday. And during the dispute, it is said that the gun went off and him was on the receiving end of the fatal bullet. Now the man presently on your screen has since been identified as 42-year-old Shawin Williams, otherwise known as Baba said to be of a new town address in Hayes, Clarendon. Now, Williams is the owner of the Rising Footprints Funeral Home. Now, the Hayes police is now stating that sometime around 10.45 a.m., Williams and a man who is said to be a licensed firearm holder got into an argument that became physical. It is reported that during the fight, the man licensed firearm went off accidentally hitting Williams in the upper body. Now, uh, Williams was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced, you know what. 
Well, uh, one thing me know, you know, my peeps, that a strap can fire by itself. A finger, half a squeeze, the trigger. So how did the firearm come into play if they were having a physical fight? That is what I really need to hear from the police. Was the firearm pulled from the licensed firearm waistband by the now deceased or by the licensed firearm holder? How did the firearm come into play? Answer that. Now over there in the St. Catherine South Police Division in the community of Central Village, the squad of them put on another decent spot of work. Yeah, man. The police them slap with another one quick and fast and send him gone a shot eye country land. Now the police report that a team of officers were in pursuit of a male in the General Browns Lane era of Central Village. It is said that they saw the male running carrying a large object in one of his hands. The police stated that they shouted to the man to stop and during the pursuit, the male allegedly brandished a small firearm and fired at the police officers. The officers also reported that they fired in response to the male's action. After the gunfire was subsided, the male was found suffering from some whole heap of carnal wounds and these two firearms presently on your screen was seen in his immediate surrounding. The two firearms presently on your screen is one, a 9mm Springfield semi-automatic pistol and the other is an M16 rifle which was wrapped in a transparent plastic. Now Indicom is on that case and Indicom is now seeking the assistance of the general public to identify the male who they consider to be a very young male. Indicom is now stating that he was dressed in a black t-shirt marked Hollister, blue cut-off jeans, and a black belt and blue underpants. Indicom is asking anyone with any information that can assist in his identification is to contact Indicom. Well, Indicom sad to say that description that you gave is a general description for most Jamaican criminals. Yeah, man. So before me talk about the last thing, just so you know, on the Spot News Media will be dropping a second vlog in the evening. Something that will definitely break a few hearts and shed a few tears, but a news report that is most definitely worthy to be placed out there. So you, the regular members of Chan Public and members of the diaspora, can also be enlightened and be aware. So look out for that one later on. So another decent spot of work put on again by the squad of them, this time by the Specialized Operations Branch. They seized this submachine gun, said to be a Mach 11, along with 12 9mm rounds in West Bay Farm Road in Kingston yesterday. No arrest was made with this seizure. So the police them definitely are put in the work. And of course, me know them could not have been doing so good without the help of you, the regular members of Chan Public. So kudos to all of you out there who has gone on board to assist the police in ridding your communities of criminal elements. And also to you, the regular members of Chan Public and members of the diaspora who is in full support of the fight against crime and violence in our dearly beloved island home, Jamaica. So this next magnificent find took place in the West Molana Police Division where a team of officers assigned to the West Molana Police Division seized this Ruger 9mm pistols with three magazines and 21 rounds of ammunition in Whitehall, Negril, Westmoreland during an operation on Wednesday, August 28. Five people, including a woman, was taken into custody in relation to that seizure.
So reports from the police would suggest that sometime around 12.30 p.m., the lawmen were in the era when a premises was searched. The premises was occupied by one woman and four men. During the search, the weapon and ammunition was found wrapped in a cloth bag that was under the house. All five people was taken into custody. However, their identities are being withheld pending investigation. Now, the last thing uh, that we are going to talk about, another fatal knockings and clappings have rocked the parish of St. James. Now, the man presently on your screen has since been identified as Rado, said to be from the Canterbury community. He was taken out in a hail of bullets yesterday by unknown assailants in the vicinity of Canterbury in St. James. Now on the spot, news media is not so clear as to the why he was taken out or who Rado actually is. But of course, we always do a checks and get back to you with it in subsequent newscast. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to on the spot news media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast on the spot news media yeah man